use this PowerPoint just to do a general overview of the different groups of organic compounds, and I'm going to give you an idea of some of the um, structural characteristics that you can use to recognize a picture of one. So within one characteristic that's key is that they all contain carbon, um, and then there's four main groups um, within compounds. The carbohydrates like breads, lipids like butter, proteins, and then nucleic acids like DNA. So let's go through. Carbohydrates, I really think of as an energy source for cells, like glucose, for example. Carbohydrates only have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. They never have nitrogen or phosphorus or anything like that, and they always have a ratio of one carbon to two hydrogens to one oxygen. So glucose, for example, is C6H12O6, so there's twice as many hydrogens in glucose as there are carbons and oxygens. Um, this is a picture here of glucose. You can see that the carbons either form a chain backbone with oxygens and hydrogens coming off, or sometimes they can form a ring as well. Um, the building block of the carbohydrate is the monosaccharide. Each monosaccharide usually has five or six carbon molecules, and we can put multiple monosaccharides together to create larger carbohydrates called polysaccharides. Proteins are the most different in the body. Um, they used to help fight off infection. The building block of the protein is the amino acid. Okay, so the amino acid always has an amino group with a nitrogen. The amino group is coming off of a central carbon. On the other side, there's a carbon bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to an oxygen. There's a hydrogen. And then the last part is called the R group. And the R group is what is variable. So it might just be a hydrogen, it might be a ring structure. Um, there are 20 different possible R groups that can be added on there. But this other, the other part of it, the amino group, carbon, carboxyl group, hydrogen, is standard. So this is um, the first one that we've looked at that has a nitrogen in it. Um, we can join multiple amino acids together to create larger proteins, which are called polypeptides. Okay, lipids are important in energy storage. They act as insulation. They're also found in the plasma membrane, which surrounds all living cells. So the one example that I put up here is a fatty acid. Um, and fatty acids have a characteristic of having a carboxyl head, carbon double bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to an OH. And then they have this long tail, which is only carbon and hydrogen. Okay, so this is characteristic only found in the fatty acids with a head region and then a long carbon hydrogen tail. So you can see that stearic acid here only has single bonds, whereas oleic acid and linolenic acid in this tail, they have some double bonds which create kinks. Um, fatty acids that only have single bonds are called saturated fatty acids. They're solid at room temperature and that's, for example, like butter. Unsaturated fatty acids are the ones that have the double bonds in the tail, for example, like oleic acid. Those are liquids at room temperature. So those are like your oils, like corn oil um, or peanut oil, something like that. The last group of organic compounds are the nucleic acids, which we're going to talk more about later on this semester in detail, but they function for um, energy carriers, and they're also really important because this is where we store our genetic information that makes us who we are. The basic structure of the nucleic acid is composed of many different nucleotides, and this is a picture of a nucleotide. It has three main components. It has a five carbon sugar, it has a nitrogen base, which is usually in a ring, and then it has a phosphate. So this is the only um, building block that we've talked about that has a phosphate in it. So that's really something key that you can look for when you're looking if it's a nucleic acid or if it's a different organic compound. 